Good morning. Happy Friday. You're waking up to Ireland AM. It's 7 o'clock on the 6th of January. How is it the 6th of January already? It's gone so quickly. I know. It's fabulous. So quick. Coming up, 1 in 20 healthcare staff are currently out sick as hospitals battle record trolley figures in emergency departments. We'll have that story and everything else making today's papers. In sports, we'll be reviewing many stories, including Man City's win over Chelsea last night as they close the gap on Premier League leaders Arsenal to just five points. I nodded there like I knew what that was about. I know, I was laughing. <laughs> like you've a clue. <laughs> Lots of, well, I might, I know about this. But it's a new year, so you may fancy a new you. We shall be getting our sweat on with a workout friendly for all fitness levels. So you're going to feel fine. Are you working out with me? No, you're no. doing it all by yourself. We decided, you know, you probably need it after Christmas. Allegedly. <laughs> And he's the moon boy turned moon man. David Roll is all grown up and will be stopping by a little bit later. And Katya, tell us, reveal all, what else is coming up on this morning's show? Good morning. Also coming up today, we have a sneaky way of getting some veg into your kids over in the kitchen. We're tackling spring 2023's biggest style trends and they are the Irish Dancing Brothers taking social media by storm. The Gardner Brothers will be showing myself and Brian some dance moves and you know what? God help them. I see you're doing your Hando threes, Brian and Elaine. We are getting it by... <laughs> Why is it? You're supposed to go hang on a second. Why is it I'm dancing and doing exercise? I mean, because okay. you're, you're the most talented one out of all. Yes, that's it. Oh, you're the most there coordinated. And in fairness, triple threat. Triple threat. Your last threat. time you exactly. were here, you were dancing around a pole. So this time, maybe this is an improvement. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, we've got to look forward to you, but for now, our weather oracle, Derek, has ventured off somewhere else today. Derek, where in the world are you? Yeah, Katya, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you doing your hand three a little bit later on this morning. Anyway, it's a drawing set to start, but we're expecting plenty of wet weather on the way from the west later on today. Quite windy as well as we work our way into the first full weekend in January. But guys, as you know, if you've been watching the show, we've been on our Healthy Buzz right across the week, of course, on Tuesday with our Park Hit Workout. Wednesday, we had our Samba class. Yesterday, we had our weightlifting with the ladies up in Ballymun. And today, we're off for a spinning class. So we're going to be firing up the glutes. We're going to be firing up the quads. And Brian, I believe you're a big fan of the Lycra. <laughs> Again, I've used Kinda the word. I like what I'm wearing this morning. Allegedly. I love Derek's jacket. See the gilet the last time. This gorgeous red jacket. I love it. I love it. You can see from space. I love that he said we're firing up the glutes. Let's leave it there. Let's cross over live now to the Virgin Media News Hub for your first update of this morning's news. Here's Anne O'Donnell. Good morning, Anne. Good morning. Thanks, Brian. Well, Gardaí have launched an investigation into the death of a man in unexplained circumstances in County Cork. Authorities were called to an apartment in Mallow yesterday evening where the body of a man in his 50s was found at the foot of a stairwell. A post-mortem will be carried out on the body this morning. Two men in their 20s are due to appear in court this morning, charged in relation to the murder of a man in County Meath last month. The men were arrested on Wednesday morning, almost a month after the body of Mohammed Ilyas was discovered in Kilbride. The worst of the trolley crisis could be yet to come. That's according to the HSE. There has been another drop in the number of patients left currently waiting for a bed in the country's hospitals. But with the peak of the flu season ahead, there are warnings the situation is still precarious. Our news correspondent Richard Chambers has the details. Well, the number of people waiting for a bed in hospitals has decreased in the week up until Thursday. The HSE says that does not mean that we have seen the worst of the trolley crisis to date. They say that we uh, cannot rule out a possibility where over a thousand people could be waiting on trolleys or on chairs, in fact, for a bed in Irish hospitals, uh, such as the fact that we have not seen the peak of the flu season at this point. I've been speaking to representatives of the Irish Hospital Consultants Association. Uh, they say that they cannot provide care to patients with dignity at this stage. It's tremendously frustrating, demoralising for the professionals in that environment and they leave and they find other environments where they feel more fulfilled, where they can do their job and where they're not apologising, stepping around people, uh, trying to bring people to, to, the, to the, ba the crowded bathroom in an emergency department, telling people they can't have a shower, telling people that they they're sorry that their history that they're giving has been overheard by maybe five or six 
other people at the same time. Well, yesterday at a HSE briefing, the interim CEO Stephen Mulvaney said that he apologised to anyone who has gone through the ordeal of waiting uh, on a trolley or in a chair uh, at an Irish hospital in recent days. They say that it is simply unacceptable and they're trying to work through this. They're asking for uh, patients to, to bear with them while they get through this. Uh, but this is a very, very difficult situation with untold strain for patients and for staff as well. To the US now, where the House of Representatives was adjourned again last night after failing to elect a new speaker. Up to 20 representatives from the Republican Party are blocking House Leader Kevin McCarthy from becoming the next speaker of the lower chamber. That's despite McCarthy proposing several major concessions to the hardliners. This has now become the longest speaker contest in 164 years in the US. The standoff has left the House unable to swear in new members or kick off a new session of Congress. Well, the House leader spoke to reporters after failing to clinch the vote for the 11th time in over three days. This is a new thought we're going to have to have. We have a five-seat majority. So it's not one side's going to get more than another. It's the entire conference is going to have to learn how to work together. So it's better that we go through this process right now so we can achieve the things we want to achieve for the American public, what our commitment was. So if this takes a little longer and it doesn't meet your deadline, that's okay. Because it's not, it's, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And if we finish well, we'll be very successful. Elsewhere, unusually high temperatures across parts of mainland Europe have left mainly many traditional winter holiday spots without much snow. Here's the details. On the slopes near Germany's border with the Czech Republic, only small patches of snow and ice remain. This is causing increasing difficulties for ski lift operators with many at a standstill. One lift operator said that while a Christmas thaw is an occasional occurrence, he has never experienced such extreme weather in his time working on the mountain. We've learned to live with the fact there may be a Christmas thaw from time to time, but I've never seen it like this before, and I've been working here on the mountain for 20 years. Unlike in the US and Canada, which have been hit by bitter cold and snowstorms, much of Europe is experiencing unseasonably warm winter weather. In Germany, the year ended with the warmest New Year's Eve on record, with temperatures reaching 20 degrees Celsius in the south of the country. Belarus, Belgium, the Czech Republic, Latvia, Poland and the Netherlands also all set national record daily highs for December 31st or January 1st. Helen Gleeson, Virgin Media News. And finally for now, it's been confirmed that Wednesday's 11.1 million euro winning lotto ticket was sold at Kelly's Cost Cutter store in Foynes in County Limerick. The National Lottery has said the lucky winner is yet to come forward to claim their prize. They're the first lotto millionaire of 2023 and the 19th millionaire in Ireland in the past 12 months. For car insurance, van insurance or home insurance, call the quote devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Thank you, Ger. We're live here in the capital this morning. We're just alongside the banks of the Grand Canal here this Friday. And we have got a spin class coming your way as we edge our way into the weekend. So we're going to be working up a little bit of a sweat as we kick off uh, your Friday morning. So do hang with us for that. Anyway, let's take an only look at weather now with Joe McKenna with us on cameras once again this uh, sixth of the month. And it's a mainly settled start. You'd be glad to hear out there now this Friday. Uh, good, dry, settled weather for many years. Now, a couple of hit miss showers through parts of southern going to West Clare some spotty uh, showers as well hitting parts of Cork and through the southeastern tip there of County Wexford at the moment in those uh, locally fresh southerly winds now right across the day any bright spells we're going to see in the earlier part of the day will slide because we will see a system develop into parts of the west bringing with it rain that rain's going to hit in around uh, early evening later on today so enjoy the bit of bright spells enjoy that uh, sunshine for getting it out there uh, early on because we do have plenty of rain on the way. Top temps of about 7 to 10 degrees and finally then tonight that rain then tracking from the west spreading and feeding eastwards across the country. So a lot of us really getting in a taste of the wet stuff as we work away into your Saturday morning and again quite windy from the south as well. Quite blustery uh, for a time too with values back to about 3 to 7 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up here in a settled Dublin city centre at the moment. We'll catch you back live at 7.35.
For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. Now let's check on your morning paper, starting with the Irish Times, which opens with the headline, Hospitals Told to Bring in Seven Day Working. The paper goes on to report that HSE top officials have told hospitals to immediately outline their plans for seven day working for staff in a bid to ease the overcrowding crisis. One in 20 health staff absence due to illness as crisis grows. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. The paper writes that the level of absence due to illness of healthcare staff is a growing concern as hospitals back battle record trolley figures in emergency departments. The examiner leads with planning delays threaten homes. It states that planning applications for thousands of homes may be refused as ongoing delays at onboard Panola invalidate many applications. On to the tabloids now and the Daily Mail discusses healthcare concerns with the headline, you face up to 14 hours in A&E. It writes that patients are now facing a wait of up to 14 hours just to be admitted to the hospital emergency departments. Over to the mirror, which leads with I dung nothing wrong. The paper writes that the farmer who tossed cow dung at two TDs won't apologise, even as one of the politicians says she feared for her safety. Next is The Sun, which opens with the headline Seven on Sean Kill Rap. The paper states seven people have been charged over the killing of Private Sean Rooney, with one accused as the shooter. The Star also leads with the Rooney story, writing I fired shots that killed Sean. The paper claims that a man who reportedly admitted he shot Irish peacekeeper Sean Rooney is among the seven suspects charged over his death in Lebanon. And finally, The Herald leads with the headline, Enoch Knock, who's there? They report that teacher Enoch Burke spent most of yesterday at Wilson's Hospital School in defiance of a court order after the school reopened following the Christmas break. Up next, as hospitals battle record trolley figures, how will healthcare staff cope? Well, we'll have that story and everything else making today's papers back after this short break. Good morning and welcome back to Ireland AM. From increasing flu cases to the doubling of road fines, it's been a busy, busy morning for the papers, I mean. Yes, it has indeed. Yes. Political correspondent with the Irish Examiner, Paul Hosford, and news editor with Barra Media, Laura Donnelly, join us with the latest. And of course, we have to start, uh, first of all, Good morning. I'm very Good morning. Happy, happy New Year. Year. Happy, happy New, Year. New Year. But it's, it's not very happy, really, <laughs> no, not judging now. by the, the headlines today. We have to start, of course, front page of The Independent today. Um, absenteeism which within the HSE, a huge concern at the moment. Um, there's significant flu cases. We have the COVID spike and everything. It's going from bad to worse. Um, so not surprising that a lot of the papers are leading with that this morning. Yeah, of course, like the trolley figures have been dominating the headlines all week. So earlier in the week, we reached the high of 900, over 930. That's dropped down over the last few days to 630. But today, the papers are looking at absenteeism in the workforce there. And like, they're just saying that a lot of staff out sick, one in 20, but... An estimated 4,500 people. That's yes. a lot of people. Yeah, so of a staff of 100,000, yeah. there's 4.5% out, so that's 4,500. But like that's, we, like over Christmas, I'm sure you saw it with your family, friends, colleagues, everyone has this bug that's going around. So it's bound to be hitting the staff that they're going to catch something. So yeah. a huge impact now on top of the trolleys is the absenteeism and the amount of staff out sick who need to be in there to, or who are normally there yeah. and would probably help the to battle the trolleys. The average wait time currently is just over eight hours. For patients um, who want to be admitted, it's nearly 14 hours. And the most vulnerable are the under four and the over 65. Yeah, that's that's one of the, the I suppose one of the really telling things about this this spike in flu is that it's older and younger people who are getting it and they're more likely to end up in A and E's or, or, or waiting longer. I suppose one of the things that we, we talked about a lot in COVID was not going to work when, when you're sick and, and yeah. the HC you know, particularly frontline medical staff are more exposed to these things, more exposed to the likes of flus and RSV and, and COVID that are going around. So it it kind of goes without saying that they would kind of contract them a bit more. I, I think the, the the problem is that this is all, you know, we've we've heard it over the last couple of weeks, this is a perfect storm. It's an increase in, in respiratory illnesses. It's it's the, the toughest time of the year. You've also got to account for people being away or, or on annual leave over the, the Christmas period. And then generally the, the, the spike that comes into a and across the, the December period because people are out more, they're, they're socialising more. It's, it, it's one of those things that you can see why it has gotten there, but at the same time, 
we kind of knew it was coming. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's the question that people are asking. Why, why did it? Why did it happen be, when we were? You know, we. I look back. We had a we had a headline about this at last May yeah. where we were right. saying this could happen this in the hospitals in winter. This has been happening years though. And even if you look at um, other headlines over the last number of days, it's dominating current affairs programmes. Uh, Stephen Donnelly, the Minister for Health's uh, first cunning plan was to um, consultants work more. And now it's all staff work more, come in seven days a week, not realising that the staff that are existing are absolutely burnt out. Half of them are emigrating to go to, to foreign climes because they can afford housing and the paying conditions are better. I mean, they, it, it's beds and that are the issue here, opening more beds and retaining staff they have, never mind anything else. Yeah, I think one of the things that, that, that you look at particularly is those is that staff thing. It, it's kind of like kind of trying to get blood from a stone. There's just not more that staff can give. One of the, the things about the 7-7 seven, seven working is that one of the issues that they have is that people just don't get discharged at the same rate at the weekend. So if you've, if you've ever had somebody who's been in hospital where they kind of are well enough to go home Thursday, Friday, there's a chance that they probably won't end up home until Tuesday, Wednesday because you get that weekend where, where discharges aren't happening. And one of the, the, the what the Irish Times suggests today is that the, the focus on that 7-7 seven, seven working is about just getting people out of hospital so that you can get people into the beds. But, you know, Stephen Donnelly said the other day there are more beds, permanent beds in, in the system. But I think that one of the things that the public is looking for is, is some kind of mitigate, mitigation measures. We knew that this was going to happen at the start of December. We knew that we could have put something in place, something as simple as masking on, on public transport. Yeah. Just to, to, I suppose, to kind of say to people, look, these things are around, just be aware of them. But also to say to the people in the health service, society and the government at large will take an additional measure just to give you a bit of breathing room, just to give you a little bit of extra help if you need it. Yeah, and I and think that, 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 that's what people are kind of looking at now, saying we went through two years of COVID where we did everything possible to stop the system tipping over. And now we're in a situation where the system looks like it could tip over because of a, a pr completely predictable spike in, in Yeah, and an abundance of caution in, in upsetting people by put, re reintroducing some m mandates. Um, we move on now to another story this morning, also in The Independent. Penalty points low after doubling a road fines last, no last November. Well, is it good? Is it bad? I, I don't said know. this to you this morning. This is clearly a good thing. I yeah. don't drive, but this is a good thing. Yeah, but if you're, you're caught... It's doing, a bad thing. Oh, of doing, course. Doing 15 <laughs> to 40 miles zone, my don't God. Don't do that. <laughs> the goal is, I suppose, to catch people. Yeah. So, yeah, the penalty... I love that smile. The goal is to catch people. <laughs> the guards would say. Yes. Uh, or, not, or for people not to speed at all. Of course. So, um, the penalty points went up um, in October and the money, the fine, went up from 80 to 160. And a lot of people would say, it's the fear of having to pay 160 euro that may have had the impact on people. But anyway, it's got a result. Yeah. So previously, there was over 14,000 fixed charge penalty notices per month. Then this all changed in October and in November, that dropped down to 13,000 penalty, uh, fixed charge penalty points being sent out in the post to people. That's so still a lot. It's still a huge amount. But yeah. it's less than it was because it's hitting them in their pocket, obviously. And also there was a total of €2 million Euro worth of fines handed out to motorists for speeding across the country in November. Only €2 million. Euro. It's a drop in the ocean, what they normally have. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose that the, the, uh, I, I, myself and Laura talked about this before we came on. We have, all, we have decades and decades of, of anti-speeding ads. We have, you know, people know... Uh, the inherently what, what the of dangers course. of driving are and they know what the, the dangers of speeding and dangerous driving are and I think sometimes you do have to kind of reinforce it with that kind of thing. 80 euro probably didn't go along with the severity of of what the, the damage that, that I high speed can do so you kind of have to balance people it. People are more aware when it's financial burden as opposed to penalty points. Yeah, indeed. Indeed, and you know someone else who's very aware of something today is a fellow who shouldn't really be throwing packets of cow dung at people. Um, you know what? It's a horrendous thing that happened, but I mean that the headlines that have been around the place says puns flying left, right, and centre. Uh, Not the only thing flying left. And <laughs> literally, <laughs> uh, Joseph Borden, a farmer from uh, Gort in County Galway, yeah. um, he's a subject of a guard investigation because he put some dung into two Ziploc bags. One flew it towards Kieran Cannon, and the other one flew uh, towards. Um, and Rabbit, both TDs, uh, 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 in a, pl a planning, uh, there was a, a local protest meeting about um, an incinerator for animal waste, isn't that right? Yeah, and the thing is, myself and Paul were saying this before we came in here as well, the TDs are on the same side of this as this man who allegedly like was at this meeting throwing this 
Ziploc bags. And we were saying before, like, it was very planned to go get those Ziploc bags and be very organised. And now he's in the papers. A few papers have spoken to him today saying he didn't do anything wrong. Someone had to do it. Also, um, reports that he left the meeting after it happened and came back, back. in five minutes later. Um, Anne Rabbit is quoted as saying she's very intimidated mm. because he was quite near her after the incident. Yeah. He remained, like, in the vicinity of where she was. So, Did any of the poo come out? I don't know. I haven't heard that. I would be we, interested we... to know. Well, any any it's... report that I've seen said that it suggested that it was kind of Contained. the bag wasn't open, that okay. it was kind of thrown at the it's at the floor a... in and around. But yeah. I suppose one of the things is, you know, Anne Rabbit said that she was intimidated by yeah. it, and there's some people who have suggested online, particularly that, you know. It was, you know, it was a, a contained incident. But I suppose when you're in that moment, it, it's not for anyone who wasn't there to say that she shouldn't have been intimidated yeah. or that, that it wasn't well, a scary well, experience. If you have but, someone around you that is making you feel uncomfortable exactly. and threatened, well, that's fair enough. That it's is yeah. subjective. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I really like, uh, you know, obviously as a, as a political correspondent, I would, but one of the things that I really like about Irish political life is that there is that ease of access towards our public representatives, that you can go to a, a public meeting and... and talk to your TV. Yeah. Um, and, and I'd be worried that things like this would kind of remove that. Sure. You know, we were outside the doll a, a couple of months ago and Paul Murphy was, was kicked by, by a protester. You, you know, you don't want to see that kind of thing creep in where TDs feel like they have to keep themselves out of remove from the public because it doesn't do anyone any good. It, it, the fact that Anne Rabbit and Kieran Cannon were in Gort to talk about this biogas plant is a good thing. The fact that the locals were able to, you know, vent their frustrations and kind of let government representatives, even though they're on the same side, know what the feeling was because of that on board Planola decision. It's almost it's the same vibe. I remember uh, certain uh, political parties were, were protesting outside um, TD's houses and things like that. It's a step that, too far and uh, we really should have draw the line between um, a, a mark of respect. I mean, we mightn't agree with what they do, but there has to be some sort of respect. For Boundaries. Yeah, I, I think job, yeah. generally speaking, not throwing bags of Crowd on people, people is, yeah. is a good yeah. rule for life. Thank right. you. Thank you so much, both of you, See for you joining us this morning. And uh, happy Very welcome back. Time for sport now. And there's plenty to chat about. Man City closed the gap on Premier League leaders Arsenal last night. And Munster are back in action for another vital URC clash as they take on the Lions this evening here. To help us with all the top sports news is editor of the 42.ie. It's Niall Kelly. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm good, thanks, you. Um, well, I have to say it was an interesting old clash now last night, wasn't it? Uh, but Chelsea were kind of unfortunate going in to the clash. A lot of injury troubles. Yeah, I mean, I think Graham Potter is probably wondering when his when his look might change. Like even before last night, we know that they have had quite a long list of injuries and then they're sitting 10th at the moment. They're hanging on inside the top half of the table. And like last night, they actually did put it up to City for... They did for a while because whatever about your your, your first team being decimated, their bench is pretty poor as well. So even to, to, to last as long as they did and even by a 1-0 score maybe wasn't too bad. Yeah, and it, it, took, it took kind of some, some very astute substitutions and some changes from Pep Guardiola to, to change the game and like you look at it like he brought on Grealish and Mares on 60 minutes three minutes later yeah. balls in the back of the net and the game has changed but I think City when they came out after he made those couple of changes at the break as well City came out starting the second half they looked like a team transformed you know they really took the game by the scruff of the neck and it was it's an important win for them as well because you know you kind of you drop a couple of points there in the five point gap as a seven point gap or an eight point gap and all of a sudden you know, you're kind of looking at things going like, oh, well, you know, our City really going to be able to, to, to close that gap in a meaningful way on Arsenal and put Arsenal under yeah. the real pressure to test their cr title credentials. Like, there's a long, long way to go. I think the City still have 21 games left to play this season. Like, there's, there, because of the break for the World Cup, there is an eternity left to play in this season. But, you know, they're exactly... This is the kind of game that, you know, you know is really good to blow off the cobwebs and could set them... Like, they have a big, big spell coming up as well. They've united... Uh, away next weekend they've got Spurs twice and then they have their first game against Arsenal like all before the Champions League comes back in mid-February so it's a real big crucial run for City's title really challenge coming is, up soon it really is isn't it because like, I mean it's not the decimation that we thought I mean earlier on in the season we said oh my god Harland is going to knock everyone else out of the water City are going to be flying no one can catch them and we see Arsenal are already uh, significantly ahead well mm -hmm. up, to, up to last night anyway so it's interesting to see what will happen over the next few weeks yeah even but even I suppose even on the quiet nights uh, for Erling Haaland and City still showed last night that they can find a way to, to get the job done and you know uh, I think the one thing that will probably 
come to bear over the course of the next couple of months is city strength and depth. Like when you're able to bring on players like Grealish and Mares for for the last half hour, like it's very easy to see how a game can change. Like no, um, one other match we have to look forward to is of course Man United versus. Everton that is this evening what are you expecting from that yeah it's kind of hard to know how the FA Cup kind of fits into both teams sets of plans at the moment like I mean Everton are obviously under serious serious pressure Frank Lampard is probably having Evan Ferguson themed nightmares since the middle of the week which is no good thing uh, and they're, like, they're obviously they're under massive pressure now having dropped into the relegation zone and you kind of feel like the league needs to be Everton's priority to a large extent like you know particularly like I'm sure Frank Lampard would love nothing more than a win tonight which would probably go some sort of the way towards alleviating the pressure that is on him it's also on the Everton board yeah. as well judging by the the discontent we could hear from the fans the other night like you know they're they're really clamoring for change there and for United as well like there is United have they're on this amazing run like where they just kind of keep chipping away at wins chipping away at wins and they've won whatever it is 10 of their last 11 like you know they've only been beaten once since the end of October like it's a it's a it's a super run of form and it's kind of moved them into a position where you know they now can be looking and kind of deciding what their priorities should be for the rest of the season and whether or not the FA Cup is one of them, I, d I don't know. Like, it'll be really interesting to see kind of for both, for both Lampard and for Eric Ten Hag, what kind of teams they name for tonight's yeah. game. And post Ronaldo, United seems to be a different kettle of fish altogether than the one we used to have. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think that's I don't think that's any bad thing. Look, I think mm. Ronaldo had had run his course at Manchester United. You know, I don't think anybody would really disagree with that. But it's been so important for Ten Hag and what he's been trying to do at United that he has shown whether you're Ronaldo, whether we saw it with Rashford last week when he overslept and was dropped against Wolves. Like, you know, no matter who you are, you know, the rules apply. And this is the Eric Ten Hag show, not the Cristiano Ronaldo yeah. show or any other and, player's show. And poor old Ronaldo hasn't a clue where he is, didn't he say? Was it yesterday he said he was in South Africa? But in yeah, fact, he well, was in Saudi yeah. Arabia. So. I mean, he'll, he'll figure it out. He'll <laughs> figure it one out. would hope so. Um, um, we have to move on to uh, the rugby now. Munster are playing, my lovely Munster. Yeah, it's like a, a, a real chance for them to kind of build on, I suppose. Last weekend, you know, Ben Healy came off the bench with a brilliant Don't cameo. Don't talk to me about Ben <laughs> Healy. I'm very upset sorry. that he's leaving. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, uh, like, so it's such a, such a brilliant cameo last week off the bench to kind of to, to snatch that game against Ulster. And, you know, I suppose on a tight turnaround, a lot of the players are still in the IRA few player management. So you've no Joey Carberry, no... Jack Crowley tonight. So even though Healy's move to Edinburgh was confirmed during the week, he starts at 10 tonight. And it's a yeah. real chance, I suppose, for him to kind of show, you know, you know, to show that he hasn't been deterred like that. He's still, as he said during the week, like, you know, his goal between now and the end of the season when he leaves for Edinburgh is to win, is to perform for Munster and help Munster to be the best that they can be. And that's a chance for him to step up now. Like, you know, I think, you know, even a uh, rotated Munster side, which is what we're looking at tonight in Musgrave Park, like, I think... They should still be good enough to beat the Lions. Um, but that said, like, the Lions did beat Munster in South Africa, well, it's nearly a year ago now, towards the end of last yeah. season. So, you know, but I, I, do, I do think Munster should have enough in hand to, to win tonight and kind of give themselves a little bit more momentum as well going back into Europe. Because they have been getting progressively better uh, yes, as, they, as, as the last year went on. They, they, yeah, they've been chipping away. Yeah. I think they're probably disappointed, uh, you know, that they couldn't beat Leinster at home on, on St. Stephen's Day. Again, sorry to be bringing up bad memories. But, uh, you know, I think, when, like, last weekend, like, that was a real, there was real spirit in that performance to dig that out because, you know, that could have easily gone the other way against Ulster. You know, it's a chance, chance to build on that again tonight and then obviously give themselves a platform heading into the European Games. Once again, thank you so much for joining no us on the Thanks show this morning. See you next time. Now, up next, we're starting the new year off with a bang with friendly exercises for all ages, including... What age are you there, Brian? 110. 110-year-old Brian. Uh, see you after this quick break. Good morning and welcome back to Ireland AM. Now, it's that tired old cliche of January. Lose the festive weight by joining a gym or get outside and start running off those extra pounds. But for those of you tired of cancelling direct debits and battling through all the wind and rain in an attempt at regular jogging routine, 
hang on, we may just have the remedy here to show us how to do it and wait for this. Without leaving the comfort of your own home is fitness expert Neve Buffini. Good morning, Neve. Good morning. Good morning, Alana. Good morning, Claire. Welcome to the show. I was just watching you last night on Operation Transformation. That's right. And now I'm seeing you here. Clearly, someone's trying to tell me something. It's a sign. It is a sign, <laughs> and I'm listening. Yeah. You've worked with people from all abilities, from beginners to people who've actually competed in the Olympics and in the Paralympics. Why is it so important for all of us, regardless of our age, to stay healthy? So exercise um, at a baseline level is so important for many different things. Um, number one, the happy feeling every day, the release of really positive endorphins. It also yeah. helps to reduce stress. Right. Um, uh, that kind of kick, kick in your step, particularly this time of the year when a lot of us might have had a, the flu or a cold, etc. It's going around. It's going around. Um, I don't know anybody that didn't have it. Um, it helps you to recover from those kind of heavy bouts of illnesses. Yeah. Um, it also helps to relieve high levels of stress when times get really tough with work, with family life, etc. You can bounce back very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, and also just for your general um, mental well-being. People always say you never regret a workout, which is true. Very true. But sometimes you have to really need psych yourself up to actually get dressed and do it. And tell me, what are the benefits of staying active? Mental health is definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah. Your mental health, um, it can take a hit at certain times of the year, yeah. but not only that, you know, life throws so many demands like at us. Said, just you know, life in general. Life in general. Yeah. Um, and it gives you that little bit of bounce back ability, but also for your immunity. Your immune system this time of the year is quite low. Yeah. And exercise just helps you kind of reboot after those lower times. But again, exercises at home doesn't have to be a whole episode. Well, listen, yes. speaking of exercising at home, it is January and I think people are out buying gym memberships like they are going out of fashion. Yeah. There is so much you can actually do, wait for this, from the comfort of your own home, right? Absolutely. There are many uh, variations of exercises that you can do. You don't have to go and get that gym membership straight away. Which is expensive. It can be expensive. Yeah. It can be expensive. But also it can be um, a, a bit of a, a trek going to the gym, getting yourself ready, having the shower. Do you know what to do when you get there? Sorry, showering before you go to the gym? What's uh, this madness? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just that. I don't make that much of an effort. Trust me. <laughs> but also about January, New Year, New You. Yes, yeah. I think people give themselves false resolutions. Exactly. I'm going to go to the gym. I bought memberships, like when I lived in the UK, 100, 150 pounds mm. a month, and mm. I've never went. Yeah, and we're giving ourselves that false kind of expectation, yeah. you know, and demands on ourselves. Yeah. So getting a regular routine at home can be much more beneficial in the build up to maybe getting that gym membership as well. Well, look, you're not sweaty enough for me. You're going to do some cardio exercises for us now. Yes, we are. Because um, cardio is very important. This is for all ages. All Which, abilities. And, yes, and yeah. can be done from the comfort of your own home. Correct. So show us your first cardio exercise there. Okay. Away you go. So we're going to start off, guys, by marching on the spot. Just a light march, nothing too heavy on the feet. Um, we have Alana here, who is the age range of 30 plus, and Claire is the age range of 60, 30 plus. Now I want to know how much is the plus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're going to step side to side now, lifting the heel back with a little bit of a butt kick. Doesn't have to be glamorous. <laughs> and keep working side to side. Very important, these exercises. Somebody is quite active and they get on the bike or they do a little bit of swimming, for example. Yep. Really, really good. And you can intensify and make this harder. What we're going to do now is change into a side step. Toe tap left and right. And now, Brian, we're going to get low, make it a little more difficult. Squatting down and pressing up. Squatting down and pressing up. You should aim to do these kind of cardio exercises between 30 and 60 seconds. And then stop, have a break. And then come up, have a break. Let your heart rate come back down. It's a great way to warm Is up. Is that like hit training, the high intense? High intensity with rest periods afterwards. Nice. Yeah. And also, if you're doing this from home, you're not in the gym, you're limited with gym equipment. Correct. What can we use around us to help us build up some strength? So there's loads of exercises that we can do at home to build up strength. The most important is squatting okay. and a little bit of pressing. Why is, squat is squatting so important? So squatting is so important because with everyday movements that we do, we squat, believe it or not. So getting in and out of the yeah, car, for example. Yeah, show us, we've got about 40 seconds on this one. Squatting down and up, getting in and out of the car, coming up off a chair, yeah. getting in and out of the couch, for example, going up the stairs. We need to be able to do that using the big muscle groups. Right. And you can make this more difficult, for example, if you wanted to weight it up with a water bottle, if you have it at home, or a baby, if you like, safely in front. Yeah, <laughs> and any modifications for different ages here? Yes, so we have 30 plus, can go a little bit deeper and load up with some weight. Well, that's want. me. 
And then, yeah, and then 60 plus, we can sit back on a chair, for example. To That's make also it a little me easier. after a hard weekend. I'm covered here. The chair, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, and come up, rest. So that's really, it can be, uh, it can be modified for any age group. Now we've done uh, cardio, we've done strength. What about all over core for our muscles, our whole body? Yes. What do you got for me, Neve? The core work is really, really great for a sustainable, really, really good posture, okay? okay. We're sitting down for long periods of time. We need to be able to keep our upper body really strong and I tall. I hear you, I hear you. Yes, for any ability, any age group. Yes, and the course. earlier we start, the better. Yeah. So we're going to come down to the floor to do okay. two core exercises. you do that and I'll watch? Excellent. <laughs> You're allowed to join in if you I like. I love these mats. I love they just kick through. There we go. So we're out. going to start off on our back for a glute bridge. Okay. So we're going to lie back, keeping our knees pointed towards the ceiling. Feet are flat, hands down by your side. Ladies, we're going to squeeze the glutes and we're going to press those hips up towards the ceiling. Push it up. Pushing it up and down. Now, this is great for any age group. You should yeah. aim, maybe 30 years plus, should aim to do three or four sets of 10. Okay. And 60s plus could aim towards two sets of eight to 10 reps. If you wanted to make it a little bit harder, we're gonna use a single leg loop bridge. Kick that leg up in the air, let's press up and down. Now we're practicing the range of motion with our hips here, but also we're strengthening up the glutes. Good the for the bum. Time. Good for the bum. Right, I'm gonna leave yes. you at this. Thank Excellent. you, Neve. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Alana. Thank you, Claire. Claire is so focused. And for more exercises, you can follow <laughs> Neve on all social media sites. Just search Buff Performance. Still to come, Moonboy's David Rawl pays us a visit. And guess what? He's all grown up. See you after the break. Ten more, ladies. Come on. Ireland AM. We're nearly a week into the new year already. How are those resolutions going? We just spoke about this <laughs> and I asked you. I'm not doing any. But you've done them before. I did and they never, do you know, I did them before and then by the one weekend I broke them on and I felt awful about myself. So do you know what? My resolution is never to do another resolution ever high again. High five. Yay, high mm. five. Still to come, he made his TV debut over 10 years ago as the utterly charming moon boy actor David Rawl has grown into a moon man. He'll be stopping by soon live. It's Nolik Naman, the day when men traditionally took over household chores so women could celebrate Christmas their way. We discuss the importance of advancing women's equality both at home and at work a little later. Plus, they are TikTok's lords of the dance. Clearly, I'm dancing as well. The Gardner Brothers will be teaching us some steps on the dance floor. Get your one, two, three, Trees ready, people. Oh, yes. Oh, look at them go. So quick, right? That's so impressive. I won't be doing that. No, you won't. And, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Will you, Cathy? Will you be doing I, that later? Do you know Girls? I, I'm up for the challenge, Let's right? do it. I'm up for it. Well, a new year means a new fashion season, but what are the must-have trends for 2023? Stylist Rosalind lifts it, joins us again. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. <laughs> so, so much to look forward to, right? Oh, yes. With yeah. all the fashion weeks kicking off in February, we're going to predict some style trends for 2023. We are starting with this look on Yumiko. She's wearing Get That Trend. It's all about the gilet, the leather look, and let's not forget the loafers. Love. Now let's check on your morning paper starting with the Irish Times, which opens with the headline, Hospitals Told to Bring in Seven Day Working. The paper goes on to report that HSE top officials have told hospitals to immediately outline their plans for seven day working for staff in a bid to ease the overcrowding crisis. One in 20 health staff absent due to illness as crisis grows. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. The paper writes that the level of absence due to illness of healthcare staff is a growing concern as hospitals battle record trolley figures in emergency departments. The examiner leads with planning delays threaten homes. It states that planning applications for thousands of homes may be refused as ongoing delays at Lord Pinola and invalidate many applications. Onto the tabloids now and the Daily Mail discusses healthcare concerns with the headline, you face up to 14 hours in A&E. It writes that patients are now facing a wait of up to 14 hours just to be admitted to hospital emergency departments. Over to the mirror, which leads with I done nothing wrong. The paper writes that the farmer who tossed cow dung at two TDs won't apologise, even as one of the politicians says she feared for his safety. Next is The Sun, which opens with the headline Seven on Sean Kill Rap. The paper states seven people have been charged over the killing of Private Sean Rooney, with one accused as the shooter. 
The Star also leads with the Rooney story, writing, I fired shots that killed Sean. The paper claims that a man who reportedly admitted he shot Irish peacekeeper Sean Rooney is among the seven suspects charged over his death in Lebanon. And finally, The Herald leads with the headline, Enoch Knock, who's there? They report that teacher Enoch Burke spent most of yesterday at Wilson's Hospital School in defiance of a court order after the school reopened following the Christmas break. Well, it is the 6th of January, the date most associated with taking down your decorations, which is what we'll be doing today, sadly. I sadly, know. yes, it's I true. miss all the tinsel I know. and sparkles. Everything looks so empty without them. And we have it for the rest of the show anyway. By the way, our decorations, which were supplied by MACDs, are being repurposed and are being donated to the Paediatric Intensive Care Unit in Ch Crumlin Children's Hospital for use next year. Oh, that's amazing. So nice. But this morning, we want to know, have you taken down your Christmas tree or your Christmas decorations already? Are you one of those? people, I've seen this with, with such <laughs> venom, that removes all traces of Christmas on December 27th. That should be actually, Criminal. Uh, that should be illegal. <laughs> or perhaps you leave them up a little bit longer into January. I left mine up to Easter once. No. Took it, oh, <laughs> took it down on Good Friday. That's the other extreme. Actually, today is Armenian Christmas Day for Arthur. So today is like our Christmas day as well. So he Two wants Christmas it up days. for another day yeah. or two. Yeah, another week. Another yeah. week, yeah, another week yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, get in touch by scanning the QR code on the screen to vote in our survey. If you don't know how to do that, you can open your camera and just scan the QR code there. I and know so I'd be... Who my takes man. them down December 27? Now, April's a bit much. That's a bit harsh. That's harsh. That's harsh. I'm kind of one extreme to the other. Either I leave it up till... Easter April. or else I don't put up a tree well, at all. I'm not the gonna, last two years I didn't put up a tree. I'm not going to leave you hanging because I did February once. I think it was like the first week of February. That's it was okay. so bad. Like, but I Easter? Didn't. Put your Easter tree up, not your Christmas tree, darling. <laughs> leave it up all year if you want to. Yeah, why no. else? Now up next, he's reminiscing on 10 years since Moonboy and much more. Actor David Rawl joins us after this short break. <laughs> You're very welcome back. Our next guest was only 12 years old when he made his small screen debut alongside Emmy Award winning actor Chris O'Dowd in the hit TV series Moonboy. Chris O'Dowd. I lost the to camera too. Oh, we and then we went like this. OK, we're here. David Rawl is set to take part <laughs> in the 24 um, hour plays return to the Abbey Theatre with the cream people of Irish talent. Picture it. You've got 24 hours to write and rehearse a play and then perform it on stage. No stress, right? And I'm sure he'll be more professional than we are this morning. <laughs> <Where's the camera? laughs> it's a huge task to take on. So is David feeling the pressure? We're about to find out. But first, let's take a look at what happens during the 24 hours. Dublin. It's going to be terrifying, but it's going to be great fun. I'm Dave Kenny. I'm the artistic director of Dublin New Theatre, and it's such a privilege to be here tonight. The energy is here in this room, and it's all about inspiring each other for what's about to happen in the next 24 hours. Nine times out of ten, you will not see the show that you've been working tirelessly on all day until the audience sees it with you. We met with the young people from Dublin New Theatre, and we've asked them all to write you each an individual personal note. Let this be the thing that'll help you get through the tough times. David Rawl, thank you so much for joining us today. Are you absolutely mad to be doing this? I'm that terrified. looks stressful, by the way. That, that gave me stress vibes. Yeah, I honestly have no idea what to expect. I was describing it to somebody the other day. I was like, it's like I'm in the queue to the roller coaster. And uh, I know this is the scariest part. And once I'm on the roller coaster, it'll be fine. But uh, right now, I'm like, this is terrifying. Do what you not I scream your way through the hard bits in the roller coaster, yeah. no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that on the Abbey stage. How do the Abbey, I mean, it is the, the, the mecca for any Irish actor really to perform on the Abbey stage. Is that what drew you to it? Just, I, I don't know, it was just kind of the idea of how mad it was and how unlike anything else you would ever be expected to do because it's so unreasonable that it's kind of magic. It's so unreasonable, he says with a <laughs> smile, it's kind of magic. Talk us through the timeline because you really mm. only get 24 hours to do absolutely everything. Yeah, so from my understanding, now, I've never done this before, so I think it's this. So basically on Saturday, this Saturday, we're going in, all the actors, uh, 30 actors. Tomorrow. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look what you're doing to oh him. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, tomorrow. <laughs> We're going in at 7 p.m. And everyone's going to introduce themselves. There's like 30 actors, six directors, six writers. And we're going to be broken down into groups. And the poor playwrights are going to have to stay up all night writing six new plays. Right. And then we take over from nine o'clock the next morning, so Sunday morning, and we basically rehearse these with the directors for the rest of the day until at half seven, having learned our lines and only done it, this has been written in one day, we go on and perform these So you've got to be off plays. script. Yeah. How good are you learning things off under pressure? Well, I'm about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> so you've never done anything like this before, really? I mean, no, not at all. I mean, you like if you're going to be going on for two hours of theatre, you know, usually you'd be rehearsing that for maybe four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so to do all of that, to learn the lines, to go on, it's absolute madness. But it's actually kind of lovely because every single person involved is doing it for free. Yeah. And so the entire thing is this kind of lovely act of goodwill for kind of the future of, you know, Dublin Youth Theatre is who it's all kind of in aid of. It's a fundraiser for Dublin Youth Theatre. And it's kind of nice that you have one night where you have the talent of Irish stage and screen coming together to kind of support the next generation. Yeah. So it's kind of lovely. Speaking of Irish talent, we can't have you here and not talk about Moonboy. I think it's been 10 years, over 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And um, is it true that was your first audition as an actor. Yeah, yeah, it was. Go I'm... you. <laughs> He'll be fine on tomorrow and Sunday. He'll be fine. Oh, I don't know. But yeah, literally, I was going to my local youth theatre, a later youth theatre company, uh, back when I was only tiny. And yeah, they were like, there was this audition on. I'm from Leitrim. They were looking for a Roscommon. Uh, it said in Roscommon, they were looking for people from that area. And they were like, we're looking for an idiot child from the west of Ireland. And I was like, well, I'll Me? do. <laughs> do that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm actually really grateful to my youth theatre for kind of giving me so many opportunities and allowing me to kind of think, yeah, I can kind of make a career of this. I think I can kind of do this. Um, I think it allows a lot of people that opportunity. So I'm very happy to be supporting them now. Yeah, yeah when you look at, I mean, I loved that series. It was absolutely brilliant. Oh, there are so many amazing scenes in it. There are so many amazing one-liners, but the chemistry within the cast was, uh, was quite special. Of course, you, Chris O'Dowd, but you originally, the part you originally went for was not you, it was your best buddy. Yeah, that's true, actually. God, I'd forgotten that. Yeah, I was like, there's no point for me going for the main part because I'm never going to get that. So I'll go for the best friend. Imposter and syndrome. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that is. It's set in from an early age. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I ended up not going for the main part. And then they called us back and they were like, would you, would you be seen for Martin? And I was like, me? Are you sure? And sure enough, yeah, I managed to get it somehow. And what was it like working with Chris O'Dowd and Deirdre O'Kane, like comedy legends? Um, I was lucky that I was too young to fully appreciate to get it, how right. amazing they were. Like, yeah. I don't think I, I was a bit young to have seen Bridesmaids and things like that. But so I was just kind of, I was just kind of fell in love with them over the course of the experience of working with them and being like, wow, they're really funny. So he just said he was too young to watch Bridesmaids. I'm afraid to ask what age he is. Because I'm <laughs> well, going to feel, was, I was trying to do the math there. If he was 12 <laughs> when Moon Boy, He's 22. Started. I'm 22. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's 10 years. He's a, I could be his dad. <laughs> I was working here a year by the time when he was born, so that'll, that'll tell you something oh, else. Lads, we'll move on. I know. We, we will move on, but like when you look at the characters, and for people who don't know, basically you were the, the, the main character, really, kind of was auto, almost uh, autobiographical for Chris O'Dowd based on his life experiences. And Chris actually played your imaginary friend. Yeah. And there was more than one imagin imaginary friend in it as well, because um, there was Johnny Vegas was yeah. and another imaginary friend. Would you believe I had an imaginary friend when I was growing up? I believe it. It was called Larry. Why? I had an imaginary friend called Larry. Why? So I know. I don't why know why Larry? it was called Larry. There you go. Nine <laughs> brothers and sisters and I had an imaginary friend. You, you figured it out. But what was it like <laughs> having that sort of... Do you think because you were so young and so childlike yourself, it kind of made sense for you to have such a part and act in such a way with Chris O'Dowd? Well, I think the lovely thing about being that young is that you don't question anything. I was like, oh, well, this is much better than school. Uh, so I was just having fun. I was going in every day. I was learning my lines. I was just, it didn't feel like a big deal because I'd never done anything like it before. I didn't know it was going to lead to anything else. I was just... Just, yeah, having a great but time. But do you think at the age of 12 that a lot of the comedy and the innuendos kind of went over your head? So if you look back on it when you got older, you probably have more of an appreciation for the comedy and all of that now. 
so much of it went yeah. over my head. It was very dirty, really, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, and like I think that suited the character. But like I was, I was looking back. There was references to like train spotting. There was references to like close encounters of the third, uh, the third time. I was like, this came out in the like seventies. Like loads of references that just I didn't get completely. And I think yeah. Talk to me. us about the whole Enya reference. The one of the scenes where you're on a raft. Mm -hmm. Um, both yourself, your best mate, and the two imaginary friends. And that is one of my favourite scenes in the whole thing because it's to the, was it the or Orinoco Flow, Orinoco Flow, music? Yeah. You, 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 I believe that's a scene that you went over your head completely, but you really enjoyed it. Yeah, so that was something that happened completely improv. Where basically on the wow. day, we were going to be going out in a big raft and they were like, we should do a music video. And they, I was like, <laughs> okay, grand, yeah, sure, that sounds grand. And they're like, we're gonna do it to this Enya song. I was like, okay, grand, who's, who's that? And so they taught me and Ian if the Enya's song. If Enya's watching, apologies. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> and so they taught us the song. And then we just went just on that and we day. just shot it. And it was probably sail one of my away, favorite things. Sail away, sail away. And, and you're worried about tomorrow, you'd be grand. I just think <laughs> he's perfect for this. Is it true that Chris O'Dowd has said he's up for doing a sequel to this? and your character would be 18 years old. Yeah. If that was the case, would you reprise the role? You'd definitely pass for 18, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that skin. Oh, stop it. Baby. No, I, I, you know, I kind of, the way that I think about it is like, it's called Moon Boy. Mm. And I think what was so special about it was, a, was that period of our lives and that specific time of, I think the appeal was that it was a load of kids going around and not really knowing what's going on. And I think what we came up with, what the three series that we had, I think everybody who was involved was really proud of it. Mm. Um, and I would be afraid of kind of trying to recreate some of that magic and potentially losing some of it, yeah. and maybe to the detriment of what we made before. Because it was so good. But it could be better. <laughs> it could not be better in name. Maybe, I don't know. Be, but yeah. would you definitely shoot it down or would uh, you consider it? Oh, I would never shoot anything down. I'm, I'm just saying that I don't feel a, a need to do it, but mm. it, it would be lovely to bring everybody back together, of as always. I think you should do it. I think it'd be fabulous. David, thank you, and good luck with the play. You'll be fabulous. It's, it's perfect for this. Absolutely amazing. You, you can find David performing his own 24-hour play at the Abbey Theatre this, this Sunday, David, Sunday. this Sunday. Tickets are still available at abbeytheatre.com. Good morning and a huge welcome back to Ireland AM. New year, new season, wardrobe. Well, that's what the fashion world is telling us, Katya. Honestly, but what is set to be the most top trends of spring 2023? We will find out because stylist Rosalyn Lipset joins us with all the details. Hello, Hello, how are you this morning? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Okay, so we're getting straight into some trends yes. now. Okay. So we are going to start off with some fun in fashion. It may be January, but we're still going to dress up and have a good time. This is the first January we haven't been locked down. I'm I hear so you, long. I hear you. So let's not just put away our fun clothes just yet and get into that workout clothes. We are going to start off with this fun look from ontrend.eu. It is an Irish online brand and the cowboy trend is really coming in. And we're seeing that in kind of Western inspired hats and boots. But let's not forget the animal print as you're wearing. Brian, I'm on trend. You are on trend in Thank your you. cheetah. <laughs> Thank you. Animal print is fun. It's vibrant. This is such a comfy, relaxed dress. Yet this print will work on any age. Mm. It'll work on loads of different skin types and it's a super, super comfortable look. It's got this um, belt, which is attachable, and it'll work for so many things, from bopping around town to, you know, going to the office and then meeting people for dinner after. It's a great, comfortable dress to add to your wardrobe, and uh, animal print is set to be big, because people want to dress. And also, you fun. could wear that with Converse or trainers as well, if you wanted to, and then change into heels for after. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Or oh. even boots. Even boots, I'm yeah. Take okay. you to... Let me talk about the shoes. Have you heard of Paris, Texas? They no. are such a fab new brand. And these are from NCBI at the designer stock drop on Triftify.ie. I just gave you a lot of information. Triftify.ie is an online charity database. So you're getting designer pieces at a fraction of the price. So these are a designer pair of shoes that would usually cost about 500 euro. They're 100 and Absolutely. you're donating to a good cause. So it's like thrifting, but online. Exactly. And it's all the charity shops all over Ireland. Oh, Wait, for look number honey, two. honey, we need to talk about we need to talk about this outfit more. Okay, she's gone. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
So next up, we have beautiful Ursula and she is wearing a gorgeous look from Irish online clothing brand, Oh Hello Clothing. And this is such a gorgeous, comfortable coat. It actually has this lovely padded layer underneath. The main trend here that we're focusing on is the slip dress. It is such a hard working piece in your wardrobe. It is so versatile. It'll go for so many different occasions and perfect for layering. We've layered it up here with this coat. We could pop a knitwear, a piece of knitwear over it, like a cardigan or a jumper. And this is such a gorgeous color. It's that beautiful emerald green, but it does come in loads of different colors. Uh, it's got adjustable straps. So really, really comfortable. And again, the bag here is Thriftify and this brand is Kurt Gaia. So the price again, 110, but you're gonna get a really uh, big discount because originally that would be a couple of hundred euro. Onto the shoes, they are again, so comfortable. A, a nude block heel, you'll always be able to wear. You'll get so much wear out of that and it'll be go tra transition throughout all the seasons right into summer. So I just think this is such a fab, fun look. And even though it's January, we could still get dressed. But also, you know, communions, confirmations are yeah, coming up. Exactly. Would this be a suitable look for something like that? 100% or weddings. Wedding. And even some people are having late Christmas parties. Yeah. There's so many different occasions to wear slip dresses, dressing up or dressing down. So our yes. last look for the segment is on Unico. And this look is from online Irish brand Get That Trend. The gilet is a hardworking piece that is not going anywhere. It was big last year and it's big again this year. It's such a comfortable piece. It's agile, it's flexible, but it's breathable. I also think it makes you look so put together. Chic. And you, you feel put together when you put on a gilet, I don't know. You do, you <laughs> feel just like girl you've walk. got it. You've got <laughs> yeah. that day in your hands. But I love the way you can kind of see the outfit underneath. Yeah. And we are big into the knit. Again, the knits are such a timeless, this is a cable knit and it is this gorgeous green. Green is so big at the moment. Everybody is wearing green, as are you, Katya. And this is such a beautiful, comfortable knit to pair with so many different looks. Here, I've teamed it with these leather look leggings, an amazing price there at 18 euro. And if you don't want to just wear, if you want to wear something comfortable, but you don't actually want to wear leggings, I think leather look leggings are so ideal for that. Um, also, we're seeing like a lot of goth inspired trends and the loafers as we have Wednesday on Netflix. So we're gonna see a lot of leathers and things like this. And the loafers are such a beautiful looking shoe. They go with everything. They're the perfect dressy shoe if you don't want to wear heels or wedges and you don't want to wear runners. I think a loafer is such a great in-between. Especially for workwear in the office. Definitely. It does look really still chic, sophisticated, but also comfortable. So comfortable. Yeah. Three very different looks, very but different. three very good looks. Yeah. And I'm glad we're on trend. The animal print I and green. the green. green. Yes. Amazing. Oh, Thank you so much. <laughs> we got to keep this up. Thanks, Thanks Rosalind. <laughs> up next, the gender inequality impacts women at home and work. We are back after this very quick break. very welcome back on Nolig Naman, where women traditionally take a rest and get together to celebrate their Christmas while men do the housework. It's an important day to highlight the inequalities women still face. Today, the, uh, the Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission have launched their campaign, Care About Equality, to challenge how societal attitudes impact women both at home and at the workplace. Joining us to discuss is Chief Commissioner Sinead Gibney and Special Needs Assistant Linda O'Sullivan. Thank you both Thanks. so much for joining us on the show this morning. I suppose... Um, when we think of gender equality, we think of the pay gap, we think of um, um, it basically people in the workforce, but this is about so much more than uh, the, the jobs that people do and the remuneration for that. We're concentrating on something different today. Yeah, exactly. I think that's exactly it. When we think about the gender gap, we do think about the gender pay gap, okay. we think about glass ceilings, but I think the gender gap can be best illustrated by thinking about how many hours that women and girls put into care across the course of their life. Mm -hmm. Because that really has an impact on how we can achieve equality within the workplace. So we've, that's why we've launched this campaign, uh, Care About Equality. And what we want to do is really just prompt a national dialogue that brings it out of the very individual ways in which we make these decisions and, and helps us talk about it as a nation, about why there is such a disproportionate amount of unpaid care uh, and care, care work that's paid, but paid normally underpaid and precarious work, that so much of that is done by women and what that really means for us in terms of actually trying to achieve gender equality. 
Yeah. Yes, and it is launching January 6th, which is the day of Nolig Naman. Is there a particular reason why you tied those two together? Well, I mean, it's because it makes sense. I yeah. mean, this is this is the third campaign that we've run around this time of year. We've previously yeah. run ca campaigns around disability and race, and this one is about women, so it just made sense to hook it onto Nolig Naman. So what we've done is to, we've talked to women, um, eight different women who have, in an unscripted way, talked about their experiences of care and how across the course of their lives their caring roles and responsibilities have impacted on their ability to, to find equality in, in society. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a really important message within our campaign is that we're not all just one type of woman as well. We yeah. are migrant women, we're traveller women, we're women with disabilities, we're lone parents. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important when we do have this national dialogue that we do so thinking about the... the, the the diversity of women that we have. And do you think it uh, really stems from what we do in the home goes into the wider economy and the, 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 the society in, in general? I know there was headlines yesterday in, in a lot of the papers about kind of tech unicorn startups that there's up to a 30% gender pay gap here. Even our own CEO today in The Times has said that there's a 22% pay gap, pay gap within, within our company here because um, it's male dominated and it takes a while to, to, to catch up with that. And given that the, the basic problem seems to be that there are women are not reaching the heights yeah. uh, 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 the, the higher levels because of things like motherhood, things like um, they're first to be called. Um, bring you in here for this, Linda, because that that is what happens a lot of times, yeah. that women can't advance in their careers because something happens in yeah. school, you're ring, ma'am. Or you're punished for trying to progress in your career. So yeah. obviously I'm a special needs assistant in a primary school. Um, again, you know, predominantly female-led role, the SNA, yeah. same with our school secretaries, and we've seen the success of their campaign. Again, female-led roles. And I think a lot of it transfers that into school then because you know, traditionally women were at home and if, you know, if a phone call is being made in school traditionally and still in 2023, it's the woman that's going to get the phone call, it's the man that's going to do it. So I suppose part of the campaign is trying to highlight that we need to break the historic inequality of gender um, gender equality and by doing that it's changed what is being normalised in our generation that women are at home or women are doing these yeah. care roles. Why are we not expecting men to do these care roles? You know men are every bit as capable as able, you know they're present in fatherhood, they're doing things, why are we expecting women to do this? And then as a result to normalise that so that you know my son, my daughter will be able to say you know there's no problem with a man staying home, a woman going to work or vice versa that it can't always come down to the woman to do this care role. Mm. I do have like a, just a small interesting perspective on this because I do think it stems from, from language as well and then also different cultures. And I found that obviously growing up, there's three of us, one guy, we were always doing the work, always doing yeah. the washing, always doing yeah. the cleaning. And my, my mother would have thought that that's what a woman does. And it wasn't until I was a teenager and you know, things are readily available for you to read on social media yeah. or online and you learn about how there's a, a gap yeah. pretty much between men and women with care. And it wasn't until then I was like, actually, you know, we can divide these jobs, you can do this. And then even in relationships, you come into it knowing I'm going to start by making sure I'm not putting in all the weight. And it's 50-50 because you you almost have to break generational curses, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I wanted to ask you, Linda, as well, because mm -hmm. you are a single parent, which I just think single parents deserve all the credit in the world. Do you think that has affected your role as a mother in any way? Yes, because I suppose you're taking on two roles into the one um, and, you know, people will say, oh, do you not think in a household it needs a man, it needs a woman? Absolutely, um, you know, men's importance in growing up in the development of children is absolutely paramount, as is that of a woman. But in many cases, like my own and many other women, we take on all of those roles together and then progression in career then as a single parent you're the one that has to say okay will I be there for the school run will I be able to do this will I be able to do that and I've nearly made it a mission in my life to show my daughter that actually you can have it all and I know they say it's a woman's world it's not we're not we're not even nearly there yeah. but you know we can't win you know if I stay at home you're lazy 
you're not doing enough. If I go to work, oh, you're poor children, you're putting them in crash. So it's changing that kind of generational, as you said, yeah. the genera- like expectation of women that, oh no, we'll, we'll do a job, but then we'll come home and we'll do all the other caring aspects. So it's changing the mindset of a society and as a generation so that those coming up behind us can continue lighting the fire that we started. Interestingly enough, um, and I know from a, a, a previous show I did that was very female dominated, and we got a lot of calls in about this very issue. And even if there is a, a stay at home father yeah. and a working mother, the amount of women who were in that situation that said, the minute I come in home, all duty is gone. Yes. Passes yeah. the kids over to me, yes. passes the chores over to me, and it's like his working day is done, whereas I've yes. put in a full day's work and now I have another. Yeah. And that happens all the time. Relay it to uh, a single father. Mm-hmm. At the school gates, Asher, isn't he great dropping his kids yeah. at school? Isn't he great making the lunches? And a single mother won't get the same thing. Yeah. We are so, even there's an, almost an internalised uh, misogyny with us sometimes, mm-hmm. yes. do you think? Well, we, we, we're, we live in a patriarchal society, yeah. so we're all we're a product of that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I, you know, we did research in 2019 that showed that women do twice as much caring as men and we do twice as much housework as men. And that extends, as you say, even when both, uh, if there's a man and a woman in the household, even when both of them are in paid work, that still exa- it still mm-hmm. persists. I mean, I think in during COVID, there was definitely a bit of an eye-opener for a lot of people where I think people who perhaps weren't in, in the home as much started to understand the, the, the type of responsibilities and, 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 uh, and duties that people take in, in caring. But I mean, this has a direct correlation to our difficulties in advancing within the workplace because women are in less senior decision-making uh, roles. We are in more precarious work and low paid work and that is because of the choices we have to make around caring and I think we all as individuals across our life cycles we are all carers and we are all cared for at different times in our lives but I think the individual choices that we make for women they are much more constrained by the structures we have in society by the attitudes that we have as a society so I think that's really what this campaign is about is trying to bring that out because really each of those individual decisions make up a picture of who we are as a society. Absolutely. And they really are preventing us at the moment from achieving gender equality. I could talk about this forever, but unfortunately <laughs> I'm after running out of time. Thank you both so much. You Thank can you. Maybe, you can see I'm a little bit passionate about it, but I, I do appreciate you coming on to Thank talk you. about this today because it's very important given the day that's in it as well because a little Christmas as well. The women got the dregs of the Christmas feast. <laughs> Men got it all on Christmas Day and we got the worst of it. Anyway, for more information on the Care About Equality campaign, head over to IHRE c.ie forward slash care about equality. Still to come, the Gardner brothers teach us a step or two on the dance floor. We'll be back after this short break. Let's check in your morning paper, starting with the Irish Times, which opens with the headline, Hospitals told to bring in seven-day working. The paper goes on to report that the HSE top officials have told hospitals to immediately outline their plans for seven-day working for staff in a bid to ease the overcrowding crisis. One in 20 health staff absent due to illness as crisis grows. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. The paper writes that the level of absence due to illness of healthcare staff is a growing concern as the hospital's battle record trolley figures in emergency departments. The examiner leads with planning delays threaten homes. It states that planning applications for thousands of homes may be refused as ongoing delays at bo- on board Panola invalidate many applications. On to the tabloids now and the Daily Mail discusses healthcare concerns with the headline You face up to 14 hours in A&E. It writes that patients are now facing a wait of up to 14 hours just to be admitted to hospital emergency departments. Over to the mirror which leads with I dung nothing wrong. The paper writes that the farmer who tossed cow dung at two TDs won't apologise even as one of the politicians says she feared for her safety. Next is The Sun, which opens with the headline Seven on Sean Kill Rap. The paper states seven people have been charged over the killing of Private Sean Rooney, which, uh, excuse me, with one accused as the shooter. The Star also leads with the Rooney story, writing, I fired shot that killed Sean. The paper claims that a man who reportedly admitted he shot Irish peacekeeper Sean Rooney is among the seven suspects charged over his death in Lebanon. 
And finally, The Herald leads with the headline, Enoch Knock, who's there? They report that teacher Enoch Burke spent most of yesterday at Wilson's Hospital School in defiance of a court order after the school reopened following the Christmas break. Now, poor old Derek must be absolutely banjaxed. He's now spinning his way into 2023 with an array of fitness challenges. He was a little breathy there with the weather, but uh, what's on your agenda today, oh, Derek? He, are you off the uh, bike yet? He's off the bike. Proper banjax, lads. <laughs> get, no, I'm still on the bike. I'm not budging an inch. Come here, we've had a full fitness week here on AM uh, over the last few days, and we're going to finish off with a spin class here this morning. I hope we've inspired you over the last few days. Join us now is spin instructor Denise. Good morning to you. Hello. Well now, done. <laughs> I joined your class earlier on this morning. Yeah. It's tough, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a bit of everything in rhythm. So we do like dance, a bit of choreography, as well as sprints, climbs, everything you get in a normal spin class, but just with a little flavor on top. <laughs> a little bit of jazz. Now, yeah. let's go back to the basics. For anyone looking to start into spin, where would they need to, to begin? Um, you can come to most of the classes, like you just have to take it at your own pace. Like if you ever need to rest, rest, that's absolutely fine. Don't go for a crazy heavy gear because you'll absolutely gas yourself out so quickly. So you really can take it into your own control. Like you can listen to what the instructor is doing, but if you need to rest, take it. Now let's talk about the calories and the fat you burn in this class yeah. because <laughs> it's pretty high, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it depends on the person as well, but you can like burn from five to 800, depending on the person. And um, depending on the style of class as well. So, like, yeah, you can get everything strength, everything from it. And you absolutely, <laughs> one thing I was doing earlier on is I was sweating buckets. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. You don't want to, like, come for a pretty workout, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> like, you leave your dignity at the door, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, so I believe we've got a, a bit of a spin challenge coming our way. So our instructor, Simon, I'm just going to pass over the mic here to Simon. OK, so Simon, what have you got lined up for All us right, here? guys, so we have a quick 60-second challenge here. We're going to try and accumulate as much distance and p as possible. So D goes B, Derek, all right? So are we all set okay. to go? We got 60 seconds 60 on the seconds. Clock. I believe we have 60 seconds on the clock back at base. Elena, are you going to count right. me in there? It's running. OK, off all we right, go. All right, guys, so we are going. We are going to kick our gears up to a 10 resistance. So OK, Derek, let's, let's go, let's go. Up to 10. <laughs> we are up out of the seat for 10 seconds. 10 seconds, So yeah. we're trying to get as fast <laughs> as we can. Come on, Derek, move those <laughs> legs. That's it, D. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> We're going to add to that challenge. We're going to take two more gears on that resistance. So Derek, two more gears. please pop those so gears up. up. We're up to 12 here. Yeah, 13. we are more than halfway through oh. this challenge here. Come this on, guys. is hard. Remember, the more gear you take, the further, the further you go. Okay, That's it, Derek. Go. That's it, D. How are we doing, Denise? Come on. You're doing good. We got the last couple of seconds. We are emptying the tank on those legs. This is Come a on. great way to work out, isn't it? Winter, summer what bodies are made in the winter. To start the day. I hope you're That's getting it, inspired. Come on, last a little bit, last a little last bit, T. Come, Come on. on. Feel oh. that burn all the way here to the go, end, all go. the way to the end. <laughs> Woo! Got three, two, oh, and one. Oh, wow. Uh, Super Simon, work, guys. Well where done. Where can we find you online? What's the website? Um, Perpetuafitness.ie. You can find all us right. online Good to book man. all classes and our packages that we offer. All right, come on, pump at the guns there. All right, all right Elaine, Brian, I hope we've been smart. <laughs> I am absolutely mad, Jack. <laughs> Back to your studio. Woo. Oh, Derek, you finished five seconds too early by our clock. There was a difference in timings there, Derek. Oh. You owe us five seconds. Okay, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Woo. I love oh, what that trainer said that um, summer bodies are made in the winter. Summer, we should have that as our new screensaver. <laughs> no, we shouldn't. No, we shouldn't. Uh, do you know what? Spinning is evil. Yes. I was at boot camp once, and this poor fella, he was spinning, and he would be more ample like ties like I was, yeah. and he put Vaseline. Uh, he put fixed vapor rub instead on instead of Vaseline. Of Vaseline. Smell oh, the burn. Oh, oh, you can hear him howling. The oh. results are in. Remember the QR code by yeah. posting? Yes. Have you taken your Christmas decorations down yet? Yes, 52%. <gasps> no, 48 neck that's, a, neck. that's a level playing field. It is. Oh, I find that reassuring. Yeah, that's good because I was going to do mine Sunday. I always thought the eight was the day, but apparently it's the six. It's the six. <laughs> so I think people are kind of 50-50. Do you know what? Do whenever you want to yeah. catch it. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's still a weekday. Wait, wait, wait until wait until Sunday. Guys. You're right. Until Coming Sunday. up next, are you a week into your healthy eating and are you missing your takeaways already? Well, worry not because after the break, we've got dumplings coming your way. See you in a bit.
very welcome back to the show. Christmas is over. Almost. Today it's over after we put down our decorations. Well, anyway, that means the dreaded word veganuary. Or is it veganuary? It's in the air. I've never heard that word before in my life. Yeah, there's loads of words. Here actually. with a recipe that's both full of veg and love, I'm sure, and totally delicious. It's Mindy Keen. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There's a lot going on here. There I'm very is. excited. Lots it of looks, colour. Exactly. You've got to eat the aim. The rainbow, I want to say, yeah, have to. Now, basically, what I'm making is vegetarian Tibetan momos. Momos. Tibetan, Tibetan. they're from Tibet. Ooh, it's a Tibetan I've never had recipe. Tibetan food. Yeah. So, all I'm doing here is warming up, well, burning probably, not warming, but <laughs> warming up a little bit of oil. I'm going to leave that to just cool a minute. And into that, it's just three ingredients. So, okay. you've got your onions, well, it's a bit more, you've got your garlic and ginger, but onions, Shredded, Three main ingredients. Yeah, shredded cabbage. It's just a white cabbage. And all yeah. I've shredded it, OK? Now, if you still have some sprouts left, use them. Oh. Good Ooh. idea there. And uh, carrot, carrot, one carrot. So into this, I'm going to throw in the onion. I love hearing the sizzle. Yeah, yeah I, just, I just took it off the heat just because it was just a bit hot. So just throw in the onions and then the garlic and the ginger. All the recipes are on your website, but the measurements. So it's just like... Yeah, you, know, you can a teaspoon so, of each. Okay, more basically dumpling kind of things. Yes, yes. Now with this, you can use anything. I mean, if you don't want like cabbage, use mushrooms. Use what? Cauliflower. Yeah. Great that. Okay, let's turn that back up now. So into that, you've got your garlic, your ginger, and your onions. Onion. Okay. Could and you use white? Like they're red onions. Could you use red? Use onions? whatever you want. Right. I just I have red onions at home, so I just use them. I use I what I have. That. Leeks. The flavour of someone's just yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, it doesn't Anything really Anything goes here with this. I think so. I'm I'm a big believer. If, if you haven't got, just get something that looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a motto to live by. <laughs> there you go. And then into that, you can smell the... Just cook the garlic and the ginger slightly, OK? Then into that, your cauliflower goes in. It's Now, it's two cups of cauliflower, OK? Shredded cauliflower. Yeah. Sorry, not cauliflower. Cabbage. 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 Get me. And then one carrot, again, grated. You can chop that up even finer if you wanted. And a little bit of soy sauce. Is that darker light? Darker light? It just... I can't see. I haven't got my glasses on. I think it's just, it's just normal. normal. Just normal. Normal. Stuff. <laughs> normal. Normal. Getting ahead of myself Again, in the dark and the light. If it looks like I? it, use it. Use it, exactly. <laughs> Right, oh, OK. That smells lovely. So you've oh, got this cooking now, and you don't need to cook it for too long, OK? Because it's nice to have them crispy as yeah. well, you know. And into that... This and is where the spices the come in. So you get half a teaspoon of salt. Sorry, quarter of a teaspoon of salt, OK? Again, quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric, mm -hmm. OK? Give it Very that. good for you, anti-inflammatory. Very good for you. And then I'm going to put, because I like it spicy, quarter of a teaspoon of red chilli powder. And then the main ingredients, the good one with the 16 spices, is the curry masala. I'm going to put in quarter of a teaspoon of that, OK? And then I'm just going to lightly just cook that. Oh, the smell oh, is the lovely. Smell. Honestly, Delicious. it is. I'm salvating. Yeah, and basically all you're doing is just coating all the ingredients that you've put in and leave it then to cool down, basically. That's sweated, that basically, is it. Is it kind That's of... all you're doing. It's yeah. cooked. Now, yeah. you could eat that on its own if Even you wanted. I could do that. Ex anybody can do that. Just well, great. I, I burnt my... My new resolution dinner to cook last you night. I burnt it last night. I can't yeah. do that. No, it's fine. Well, then. I've learned my lesson already. Fifth of January. I think you do it on gone. purpose, don't you? So your husband has to cook. Uh, yeah, you do it on purpose. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. I need yeah. to find myself a chef as a husband. <laughs> I think. So that is cooked. Now a bit of um, lemon juice onto that is fine. Obviously, I'm going to throw in a bit of coriander as well. Just give it that bit the more colour. The colours here are also so vibrant, aren't yes. they? Yes, love it, love it. So healthy. Now for the dough, very simple, easy again. All we're using is all-purpose flour, plain flour. Half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt and water, and you get that. And I ain't got the time to make that, so okay. you get a big Three lump of dough. Three minutes left, Mindy. Yeah. yeah. And with that, then, you have a rolled out, a nice round circle. Black thing. And then get your choppers. Here we go. Put it in, in there, and you've got... I'm just going to turn that off. And okay. you could use any shape there you if can't... you wanted to zhuzh yeah. it up, Yeah, I mean, you? like... I've got different sizes here, but, you know, you go with the one that, you know, if you want big yeah. ones or little ones or whatever. I've got for Valentine's, you can get a love heart. Oh, oh that's... It well, I don't know how you're going to fill it. Let, let's, oh, do, yeah. let's do the roundy one. Yeah. Let's love. do the roundy one. So then you've got... <laughs> I'm just going to add a little bit of water around it, and then I've already made some here, as you can see. That's yeah. what it yeah. looks like when it's cooled down. You want to work with it when it's cold, not too hot. OK. okay. Otherwise, you're going to end up burning your hands. So you get your little casing. You put a little bit in the middle, OK? and flatten it down as much as you can. And now you can do half a momos, like half 
I'll do two. I'll do moon shape one. It's yeah. like a gyoza, like a, a exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. So like you'd get. I mean, it's Nepalese slash Tibetan. Yeah. So you can do one like that, yeah. okay? So you've got it. So it's like that. And the round ones that I've done for you are the momos. And you've got. <laughs> Mindy says momos. Momos. I know. They're kind of one ton shaped, are they? Yeah. So you basically you are then just squishing it all squishing in. it all in, folding the creases in to make like a, a round sort of like dumpling. Like a little bag. Yeah. And then twist the top. Oh, that's cute. And you have and a little it's so moldable. Moldy. Yeah, there you go. You've got that. Now, so you've got two of them. So you've right. got different styles. Yeah. And what we, you do here, you've got your steamer. I've right. got this bamboo steamer. And what you, you normally just coat it with a little bit of oil and yeah. just so it doesn't stick. And you put them in. Put the lid on. How long Let are it cook for, for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, OK. And voila, we have them. Oh, and thank God. <laughs> You don't have to wait ten minutes. With a minute fight. left, we can eat. You can eat. So basically, I'm just going to take that off there. I'm just going to. So that's what they should look like. Okay. Hopefully, they'll come off safe and sound. Oh, we've yeah? got some sauces here. And as you've well. got. Oh, you've got some sauces there as well. So I'm just going to throw them. Sweet and sour. So they should be nice and hot for you. So we have a soy sauce and a sweet chili. You sauce have here. a sweet chili and a soya. So okay. Perfect. Just a little and, bit yeah. of just to give you a little bit of decoration. Of course. There you go, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And. Uh, you Ladies ready to first, rock? Let's rock. Have you a go, taste. You head in there first. Maybe take the. Now, hopefully, it's not too I'm hot for you. In. Look at me being all laid like with my knife and fork. Normally, you just shove it in. Mm. No. That is delicious. Isn't it? It's it is just... so good. Oh, 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 oh. No. Is that hot? I love mm -hmm. hot Sorry. food. Mm -hmm. No, it's heat hot. Mm -mm. You mm -hmm. have to read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Full recipe details <laughs> are on the website or check out Mindy's website. Mama Nagis. Mama Nagis. Mama Nagis uh, recipes and stockers uh, details. Up next, we're back on the catwalk. See you in a bit. I These can talk so now. Yeah, they're delicious. Isn't Thank it? You, <laughs> See you in a bit. Welcome back. This morning, we're focusing on some of the biggest trends set to take over spring 2023. Stylist Rosalind Lipset has stayed with us and brings us her top picks. Good morning once again. Good morning. <laughs> so today we are looking at the shacket, we're looking at jumper dresses and our favourite colours to hit the runways this February. So we are going to start off and we have the lovely Jessica. Now, green is in, as we discussed earlier, it's a great addition to the neutral family. You know, we have the greys, the blacks, the whites, green, all the different shades of green from khaki to this more kind of deeper emerald green. It's such a handy number because it just goes with so many things, skin tones. It's so versatile yeah. and it's a kind of thing that you can wear over and over again. This jumper dress is so comfortable. It's the kind of dress you can wear to the office and then meet people for drinks after. Yeah. It's, you know, and you're just put together yet comfortable. This is from Get That Trend. It's a lovely fit. It's got the tie waist detail. So it's it's a in. lot of detail for a jumper dress in that actually because you've yeah. got the wrap effect, you've got the tie waist, you've got the puff sleeve Shoulder and there's quite a uh, And unusual. then the ribbed material. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. I like how the sleeve is a bit longer. It's, yeah. it's more flattering. It's very feminine. So you have room to scrunch up yes. your, your uh, yeah. sleeves as well. So this is another bag from thriftify.ie that I mentioned earlier. Pre-loved vintage and charity shopping is huge at the moment and it's only going to get bigger because we have access to things online. This is from NCBI and the designer is Pinko. So this tote bag would be probably 300 euro. You're getting it for 50 euro. It had the tag on it. So it was a donation or a return straight from mm. the brand. Now we're going to go on to the boots. The biker boots, as I mentioned earlier, the goth trend is creeping in. We have, you know, Wednesday on Netflix and we're seeing a lot of goth chic come in. These cool kind of grungy style boots, really funk up an outfit. They're super comfortable, yet they look really kind of put together. And, um, you know, I think they're really fun as well. So a great way to kind of rock chic your look. Yeah. Absolutely. Look, I think everyone has a pair of those in their wardrobe or something like them. They do uh, so much. I used to go with my docks. Like, ah, yeah. Funny. Yeah. Sure not. <laughs> now, these are the opposite of docks. Anyway, we'll come to the shoes in a while. But now, what's the, what we're trending here, I would imagine, is the shacket. Isn't it? it is the shacket. Shacket. If you haven't heard of the shacket, you have... A, where have you been? Where have you been? You. Not watching Ireland AM, clearly. <laughs> exactly. The shacket is the hybrid of a jacket and a shirt. 
So you have that shirt look, that shirt pattern, but in jacket form, so you're warm, you're cozy. I love this long line jacket. This look is from ontrend.ie.eu. It's a great layering piece. Look, I've worn my jacket around the house numerous times. It's almost like a, a, a dressing like, gown. Yeah, yeah. It's so, so comfortable. <laughs> is it's, this wool? This is, yes, it's got a wool uh, feel to it and it's um, fully lined. So it's really, really padded, really, really warm and it's got lovely pocket details as well. Um, underneath, I've just popped it with a black polo neck there. It's just so handy. You can layer it with anything really from like a more dressier look to this really relaxed look. And uh, I popped it with a black polo neck and these gorgeous wide leg leather pants. They're so fab. As I mentioned, the whole goth chic look is coming in. The skinny jean, we still love it, but you know, we're kind of looking more towards wide leg yeah. for comfort. Yeah. I feel like after, you know, the pandemic and everything, people still want to dress comfortably. I want to be cozy. Yeah. I like a loose leg. I don't feel like I want to take them off the second I get home. Uh, now we're going to go onto the boots. Uh, I feel we should be line dancing. I'm not oh. going to lie. Okay, so these are Isabel Moran and they are reduced from 1700 to 129 what? on Thriftify from NCBI. You're going to get absolute steals that on that site. So, so, and not only are you getting a bargain, you're shopping for a good cause, yeah. which we absolutely love. They're such fab shoes. I think there's one mark on them. They look really practically not different worn. different with the studs, very nice. Very cool. Yeah. So last but not least, we have the lovely Yumiko and she is wearing this really kind of 80s vibe look from Oh Hello Clothing. This is, again, the jumper dress we are seeing absolutely everywhere for good reason. They're comfortable, they're chic. You're gonna just lounge around the house looking super cute in this, or you can wear it for lunch or for a day out, even a night out. People are wearing jumper dresses on nights out. This has a lovely zip detail, a gorgeous kind of gold uh, detail there on the zip. It's super loose and baggy and oversized feel, but then you have the belt to cinch in the waist. Again, another bag from Triptify at NCBI. This is Furla and the whole Barbie core trend. We have it's Barbie. It's not going anywhere, is it? It's oh, no. big this year. And I'm all for it. Like, I love Barbie. <laughs> but uh, so Barbie, uh, the movie's coming out. So everyone has their bright pops of pink and that is perfect with this bag. And then teamed again with that kind of cowboy chic ankle boot style at an absolute bargain there for $19.95. Uh, really fun little um, little heel on it. So not, a, not so very comfortable, great for rocking around town uh, and they'll work really throughout the seasons. They go great with the leather look legging as well. Or a skinny jean or anything like that, they really yeah, would. And I love that colour, that colour cream is quite flattering on most complexions actually. Definitely, and it kind of has that suede look, but it is in suede, so you're not going to worry about getting it dirty or anything. Yeah, so actually, really I look. love and the zip detail having gold because I like it warms all it all and gold jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, you have plenty of that. Plenty of that now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much Thank once you, again, so much. Ros, for joining us. Now up next, we catch up with the Irish Dancing Brothers taking TikTok by storm. Don't go anywhere.
okay, we could oh. so do that. Oh my God, I'm ready. It was I'm kind of a basic level. It was on. a basic <laughs> level, right? <laughs> Not. Welcome back. That was Michael and Matthew Gardner, the dancing brothers who have, wait for this, amassed a master following of over 2.5 followers on TikTok <laughs> and have danced their hen, a doe, a tree, 2.5 yeah. million, excuse me, <laughs> all over the world. I mean, wow, and your sock game and your fashion, it's just on point. Oh, it's incredible. So Michael and Matthew have joined us now. Lads, you're very welcome back. Happy New Year Thanks as well. Us. Now, I got to ask, I've been seeing you everywhere on TikTok and just the power of social media is crazy. I want to know whose idea was it first to start uploading? Because obviously you've been dancing, but whose idea was it to like get the first video on TikTok? <laughs> and then they get the credit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we, we always kind of had a goal to, to upload some videos. We always yeah. like, we always really enjoyed dancing together, obviously. Yeah. And just being creative with our videos and trying yeah. to show the Irish dancing how, how versatile and modern it, it could be. You know, we love dancing to the traditional music as well, but trying, to, trying out new things like ACDC or yeah. Eminem or something like that. You've, I thought they were twins. They had to tell me they're not twins. I went, are you twins? I they're thought you like, were yeah. twins as well. No, no. no. We, so I, I thought it was an obvious time. question. No, I think you're failing everyone because everyone's buying it. But no, listen, do you, could you tell which one's the oldest, which yeah. one's the youngest? I got it wrong. I'm going to say oldest, youngest. No, no. that's... that's 99% of people. I mean, even yeah, my mom get gets us mixed up, so yeah. we get, we understand. Now we feel better. I'm actually the older one. He so has the baby I thought I was being smart because you're the taller one. I was like, maybe I'll say you're the oldest. There's a little heel in that shoe. I know. There is, there is. You've always danced together yes yeah. um how did you get started what was that process like was it like an instant hit oh yeah like so matthew and i actually were born in denver colorado okay. and we grew up uh in denver uh before we moved to ireland in 2006 but we started irish dancing in denver because our parents who are both irish wanted us to have some sort of irish culture and irish dancing was the thing to do then so they put our sister anna uh, she was really the one who started it all, so she should get the credit, really. Yeah. Um, she, it's the sister. It's I know. the sister. It's the sister. There's honestly. always a woman involved. <laughs> she, uh, she started the dancing, and uh, I kind of joined the class at about four years old, and immediately, like, there was a few lads in the class, and that made it really, really easy for me. Um, so, like, I absolutely loved the class. And then I think by the time Matthew came along, he was, like, two and a half, maybe three yeah, years two old. two and a half, three. Uh, it was just, like, part of life. I didn't really yeah. get a choice. Yeah, but no. No, I, I absolutely loved it. You're doing Irish dancing. You yeah. are going to become yeah. a professional. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was it. Yeah, we never looked back. But yeah, we've we've loved every second. Yeah. Well, now, from from the montage we've seen there, like you're you're dancing in such cool locations, yeah. and you know the content is top notch. And I can only imagine you're probably immune to just putting your phone down in public <laughs> and just standing back and just letting it go for about thirty seconds. But have you had some people like funny encounters just come in and be like, what? What are you doing? What are you All doing? The time. Yeah. Or All even the time. Fans. Yeah, like we've had we've had some incredible reactions and a lot of people asking what what is that? Yeah. But one uh, amazing story we the guards were actually called in us once and the police have been called in us yeah. in, in different countries But the guards thought we were like smashing glass or something. We were, we were down a, a country road and the it was just the called. sound of our shoes Yeah, yeah. But, so I love that we noise. No, they thought we were up to no good and then when we told them no We're just making Irish dancing videos for social media. I think they they didn't believe that at first, and then they were kind of like, <laughs> show us first, and then, then we were fine. Yeah. But we have had some amazing experiences with, you know, people coming up to us. Wow. You've performed in some amazing places. Why the Bronco Stadium? Why was that so important as you smile? Yes. Yeah, that was, that was like a dream for us, because obviously we're huge Broncos fans, because we were yeah. born in Denver, grew yeah. up supporting them as kids, and still yeah. support them now. Yeah. Uh, we got an email one day from the Broncos saying, we'd love to have you out to a game. Yeah. And initially we were like, well, you know we're from Ireland, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, but they were like, yeah, that's no problem. So we, we went out and we actually brought our dad because it was his birthday. So, so it was we got him flights as well. Surprise, yeah. And they let, let us shoot content and we actually performed at the game in yeah. the stand. Was that in the red jerseys? Yeah. 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 Yes, we just did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we had so much fun and it was like, we got basically a private tour of the stadium and they just let us do whatever we wanted. It was. I should have learned to Irish dance. Oh, no. <laughs> it's never too late. It's never too late. Yeah. Well, kind of isn't my age. <laughs> life experiences and like another huge life update for you guys. I mean, you're starting 2023 with a bang. You're joining yes. the River Dance troupe yeah. in a few days. You're leaving to go on tour. I just, what is it like? It, it, River Dance is iconic. It's so iconic. It's like yeah. I yeah. grew up with it. Like, what is that like joining that team? Well, River Dance is obviously, you know, it's been a big part of our life for a long time. And we've we've been uh, honored to be two leads in the tour last year. We were both selected, which is the first time the brothers ever got to do that. And this time we're going back on, on tour as leads, which is obviously very special. And the even more special thing about it is that it goes to Denver at the end of the tour. So it's, you know, it's going to be a very, I'm sure, very emotional and very, there's going to be lots of emotions, I'm sure. But Matthew and I <laughs> will both get to perform kind in Denver. Kind of a full, full circle moment for us because it's the first time 
we, we saw Riverdance for the first time in Denver. Yeah. Wow. So, so obviously to join that team and obviously all the history that's involved in Riverdance, it's 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 very special and we're you know we're honored to be a part of that team. Only 30 people get to be selected every year, so it's you know we're happy to be back again for another year of touring. Wouldn't that be full circle if you invited your John's family from Colorado yeah. to yeah. come yes, over? Definitely. Yeah, we're gonna have to get all the family and friends <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just fill the crowd. Yeah, <laughs> fill the crowd. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm always so impressed with yes. the dancing and the ability, yeah, yeah. but also the poise and the dedication mm -hmm. for that. Like, how, long, how much are you rehearsing every day? Uh, well, in the competition days, you know, when you're competing at the World Championships or something, it really is, if you want to compete at the highest standard, two hours a day, every day of the week. Yeah. Uh, and you have e either a competition or a rest day at the but weekend. Two hours isn't bad. I thought you were going to say like eight or ten hours. Well, it, it can be when your teachers are getting you to do full thing okay, after full yeah, thing, yeah. like full dance. Two uh, hours is doable. We could do that. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. I believe tomorrow. you're going to teach us yes. something. Yes, yeah. definitely. Okay, so, well, what? we put the iPads well, you, down. Listen, you, you got the heels out. Because <laughs> you have runners too. This is true. I had like five Let's inch pass heels these over. Right Elaine is waiting patiently <laughs> there. She, yeah. yes. All right. Elaine's just going to look and laugh. I've got to watch. You guys take a board and we'll start off. Okay. Um, what we'll do is so, <laughs> so, shoulders back, arms in, yeah. okay. and the feet have to be turned out. Okay, and we're gonna go so step, step, and then out in, out, start yeah. up in, and then we're gonna switch to the left leg, step, out, oh. in, out, in, yeah. <laughs> and then pop. Matthew, you take over for the okay, okay. This is the so we're going, tricky bit okay, now. So Matthew, okay. from here we're going. So we just did this, out in, yeah, switch out in, pop. Now, are you ready for this now? Okay. So right foot in front, okay. yeah. and we're going jump, in, which you're not actually supposed to do in Irish dancing, but That's we're going like to do it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then out again. Out. And then back in. Okay. And then back. Okay. And that's all it is. So you we're going to go. I think if we had those clippity cloppity shoes, we'd it's sound like oh, we know what we're doing. Okay, yeah. so okay. let's try that again. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try okay. it to the music. Let's okay, go. Okay, go. Tell us what. Count me in. Six, five, six, nice and slow. Step one, two. Step one, two. We got this. Oh, that's too vicious. That's it, you got okay. it. Fun, guys, you got it. Uh, yeah, right, you we'll, got we'll it. We'll let you actually, you know, show us I how it's done. I think you guys should show us how it's done <laughs> okay. properly. Uh, let's okay. go for it, let's yeah. do it. Take it away, lads, off you go. go. Right. Enjoy, sure. take notes, take notes. You want me then, but easy come and easy go. And it wouldn't, so anytime I bleed, you let me go. Yeah, anytime I feel, you got me, no. Anytime I see, you let me know. But the plan and see, just let me go. I'm on my knees when I'm begging, because I don't want to lose you. From me, and when he got on the knees for the knee part, <laughs> like that, oh, long <laughs> you were so Did you, you, were, you were you taking I notes? I've done much better than either of you. Uh, that's incredible. <laughs> Thank I you the shoes and all for it. Yeah, Honestly, actually, you do. amazing, oh. amazing stuff. <laughs> and coming up tomorrow, she's the if denominated star of Peaky Blinders and his dark material. Simone Kirby will be joining us. Plus, we meet the helicopter pilot from the chart-topping Netflix volcano documentary. Wait for this. Actually, survived the infamous White Island eruption. We'll help you hunt for a new job. We've advice on quitting smoking and gym wear on the catwalk. So we're back in the morning from nine. Now, come here. We've taken over your board. Are you having shoe like, envy? Yeah. I used to tap dance, would you believe it? But they make a hell of a lot more. They're higher than you, so. How fast can you go? Can you do the Michael Fatley fast thing? Not oh, bad. Wow. <laughs> now you're now you're under well, pressure. That's why they've taken the money. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. 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 See you tom